Hello all of my internet friends and internet people. Today I want to do an Assassin's Creed comparison of the three most recent games. So the ones that are going into a more RPG sort of thing. That's Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla. And this is in celebration of the Siege of Paris coming to Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I have not played it yet but I've been playing Valhalla a lot recently. I was a bit late to the game on that one. And in celebration of that, I want to do a comparison between the three to definitively, objectively, and completely non-biased, because of course, <coughs> I have no bias, do I? Mm, maybe I do. We'll see. But I want to objectively find out what is the best Assassin's Creed of the most recent three, the modern era, the RPG era, the action RPG. Okay, so to make this a little bit more objective, I will be ranking each game on four different categories and they are gameplay character so that is your main character uh, all npcs come under a different category which would be story and i suppose they also come under the next category which is setting so for clarification that is gameplay character setting and story so those are the thought for i'm going to be grading them on obviously that covers almost all of the game there are some aspects to things i'm not going to go into things like graphics because obviously the graphics are better in the modern one that's why i'm going more with setting uh, but so those are the, i'm going to be marking i'm not going to mark them out of 10 or anything like that i'm just going to be grading them against each other so if i declare that valhalla has the best gameplay it will receive three points and if i declare origins has the worst gameplay that would receive one point and they'd go through all four of the different categories and then at the end we'll tally them all up to see which one I've declared the best and of course my opinion is very very important. I am a very important figure within the gaming community. Me and my 15 subscribers. Haha! <laughs> Let's go! Okay so gameplay and we will start with Origins. So I'll do these in chronological order. So gameplay first for Origins. Now I actually really enjoyed this. Uh, I thought that the gameplay for Origins was very interesting because it was the first uh, Assassin's Creed game I'd played in a while since Assassin's Creed 3 and it was very different going into a much more RPG direction I very much enjoyed it um, it was so much more RPG you could change all of your weapons obviously and you could upgrade to earn new moves and now I quite liked that that you had these abilities that it was just more sort of you know hold down R to achieve a certain move rather than just pressing a singular button and it did all these big fancy combos or anything like that. I quite enjoyed how they modeled them into the already uh, quite extensive combat system and the, down the only downside would be that the armor there was no sort of armor that you could change at all and also there weren't really any side quests there were a few but it wasn't that much of a branching quest line in that sense in terms of all the quests um, but we'll move on now to then Odyssey, which went even further down the RPG rabbit hole. And I really enjoyed this. You have the ability to change all of your armor pieces independently. Um, but one thing they did do was they went to this idea that you could lock your special moves to hotkeys for so buttons one, two, three, and four. And then that just did like a special move. And I wasn't as keen on that as, as I said in the previous one, where it kind of linked into the existing combat system. And if we talk about quests, which I did uh, for Origins, there were a lot of side quests. If anything, too many. And now I know this is a weird thing, I complained the one didn't have it enough. This one had a lot to do. All the different islands had their own personality and their own quest lines for most of them, which were completely separate from the main quest. And that was the problem. The game felt somewhat bloated, like there was almost too much to do. It was content for the sake of having content and things to do. And I wasn't that much of a fan of that. But uh, luckily, Valhalla gave you the best of both worlds. So they streamlined all of the random side quests. There was a lot to do. Each different county, like with the islands, had its own quest line that would take hours and hours to fulfill, but it was linked back to the main quest. It had a point and a purpose of linking to the main story and the evolution of Eivor as a character. Uh, they also took the best of both worlds with the combat. You could unlock specific moves that you'd bound to your hotkeys 1, 2, 3, and 4, but then you also had uh, like a stomp where you just held R on an enemy that was down, so certain situational and context-based moves, which... I was very happy with it gave you that best of both worlds 
And quickly as well, they carried over the... In Odyssey, it was called the Cult Mechanic, where you had all of the different Cult of Cosmos members. And in Valhalla, they did the similar thing with the Order of the Ancients, and you could chase them down separately as actually a separate sort of level of side quest to the main game, which I actually really enjoyed. I thought that was a really good mechanic, where you had to chase down clues, and in Valhalla, they made that even more sort of interesting with chasing down the clues and actually trying to find out who these people were. You had to put a bit more work into it in Valhalla, which I really enjoyed. So that means the winner of gameplay is... Drumroll, please! Valhalla! With Origins coming in second and Odyssey, unfortunately, coming in last there. Well, let's move on to our next section then, shall we? Which is... Okay, so our main characters of the games then, we'll start with Bayek. I liked him, he was a good character, if I'm going to be completely honest, a little bland. Uh, he was interesting, to a degree, I liked his roaring rampage of revenge storyline, but because he was supposed to be the good guy, the hero, he was quite one-dimensional, and honestly, when you re realise that actually, originally, Aya was supposed to be the main character, uh, but then they got concerned about having a female protagonist, stupidly, they decided uh, Bayek was supposed to be killed off and you were supposed to take over as Aya for the rest of the story. Uh, which, if you've played this game, that suddenly makes a lot more sense why she's involved sometimes. But yeah, so Bayek unfortunately was kind of a secondary thought in that sense, so he's a lot less interesting than Aya as a character, I think, anyway. So we'll move on to Cassandra. Oh, Cassandra. Probably the most popular Assassin's Creed protagonist since um, Ezio from what I can see online and in the fandom, and I get why. She is an amazing character, her voice actress is brilliant, and she's far better than Vemos, uh, her brother, who is the male character if you decide to play as a male, uh, as a man. Uh, yeah, way better, just the voice actress is great, she, she's got great range and puts an enormous amount of emotion. My only problem with Cassandra as a character is that because you're given so much choice within the story to dictate how dialogue goes, she can be very different. One person's Cassandra can be very good and very honest, but another one can be practically downright evil most of the time. But even if you go for fully good, she's still far more three-dimensional than Bayek. She's motivated by very personal anger, and she can be extremely aggressive at times, and has a very dominant personality as well. I quite liked her as a character, it was fun. Let's try for Valhalla, shall we, with Abel. Now, Eivor's a very interesting character because they are actually a woman, but by using the framing device of the game, they also have Odin's thought processes and patterns going through them as well. So they are both male and female, canonically, at the same time. Now, I found Eivor to be a fantastic character. I very much enjoyed, obviously, with the Viking setting, that Eivor could be a bit odd at times to a modern viewer. That In that she is very honourable and is bound by her code of honour. However, Viking honour... <laughs> slightly different to modern day honor and she could be obviously as a viking incredibly uh, aggressive and actually sometimes downright cruel but as a character fantastic i very much enjoyed her she was a very fun character i felt and i loved the idea that she actually has this part of her that is torn you are quite often sent to her talking with odin and she wants to do the good thing and odin's whispering in her ear so she's always torn between what she wants to do and what Odin wants to do, and separating herself from that. And I thought that was really clever. However, I thought she could be a bit dull at times in comparison to Cassandra. So I think it's fairly clear who my winner is here, and it is, of course, Cassandra. She takes the top spot with Eivor taking second place and then Bayak coming in last. He is a good character, though. I want to clarify that. Just not as good as the other two. So from there, though, let's move on to our next category. Okay, the setting. Well, of course, with Origins, we had Ancient Egypt, which... I mean, I'm just going to say, it's awesome, isn't it? It's Ancient Egypt. <laughs> uh, yeah, the world felt a little samey at times, because most of it is just, you know, desert and a few rocky canyons, but... I mean, I've been to Egypt, I've been to the pyramids, I've been to the Valley of the Kings, and the way they've managed to design it and get it looking spot on is, is frankly incredible, and it was so much fun to roam around in, and exploring all the ancient monuments was great, even the big city of Alexandria was fun. My only downside to this is it did feel quite samey at times, particularly in comparison to the other two games, 
And let's talk about that then with Odyssey. Okay, so let's be honest, Ancient Greece, not as famous as Ancient Egypt. You know, pause the video now and name all of the monuments in Ancient Egypt that you're aware of. Okay, now name all the ones in Ancient Greece. Yeah, it's not as many, is it? But in favour of Odyssey, I will say it was a much more varied map with mountains and very large open oceans and it just felt much more fun place to be in and explore because there was so much variety to all of the different islands and sectors of the game however again far too much ocean haha <laughs> too much water yeah there was hope somebody gets that reference um yeah th it was too much the game felt bloated it felt large for the sake of being large the ocean was far too big and it took you far too long to get anywhere and again here comes that word bloated unfortunately but it was still great though and i still actually preferred it to uh, origins as generally as a game world so let's move on to valhalla and i'm gonna go and be completely biased uh it's i'm gonna straight tell you now it's the best one it's in england isn't it and it's so varied from the rolling hills uh, of Ken up to the mountains near the borders of Wales and then up to the snowy landscape of, of Northumbria. But also Norway. But also Vinland, which for those who don't know is North America. But also Asgard and Jotunheim in the dream trance states and whatnot. There's so much variety to the entire setting. And I just love England as a setting. The, the rolling hills and the forests and it felt big but also packed with stuff to find and explore and not bloated. There was not just empty space like in Odyssey, which I personally prefer. However, I will say I was a bit gutted that you couldn't go to Wales. <laughs> I am Welsh, despite my accent, and I would have enjoyed that. But there were a lot of, uh, particularly in some of the areas of the game, there were a lot of Welsh symbology in the Welsh Dragon and whatnot, and I quite enjoyed that. So that's good. And I actually, uh, side note, learned a lot more about history from this game than either of the other two which is a bit odd considering it's it's my history it's the history of my country uh, but there you go there was that so yeah i thoroughly enjoyed that as a setting and i can tell you right now obviously i've not been coy about this uh, valhalla takes the top pot spot for setting uh odyssey takes second and origins unfortunately because it was so bland comes last we'll move on now to Okay, story, and for a lot of people this might be the most important aspect, but let's go. Origins, fantastic. It's a great story, it felt very personal, and it was a nice way to demonstrate the creation of the Hidden Ones, or the Assassin's Guild as a clan. Um, a nice subversion as well of actually at the end, Bayak and I uh, separate. Uh, she goes off to become Amonet, the legendary assassin. But yeah, I quite like that, that they didn't just get back together and it was just, it was this happy ending. I but I will say it was a little simplistic. Um, it had moments of emotion, particularly when Bayek's son was killed. That, that hit hard. But for the most part, it was pretty straightforward. But it was a roaring rampage of revenge, as I mentioned earlier. And I loved it. I, it genuinely was very fun. Okay, so on to Odyssey. And eh. <laughs> That's what I've got like... I've been pretty good about Odyssey so far, but this is where I feel it lets itself down. I felt the story was pretty predictable, and honestly, with nine different endings, again, it felt bloated. And all of the endings relate to your family and how many family members survive, and the variations of which family members survive. And sometimes the choices you make can feel so small, but they affect up to massive things outwards. I just... <laughs> Yeah, I like branched endings, and you know, Until Dawn is a great game if you've never played that, have a go at it, but maybe one day I'll do a playthrough of that one, but yeah, it just felt too much. It felt, again, bloated. I think the whole game can be described as bloated, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was just a bit simple. Um, I enjoyed it, I did, it was very fun, but it was not as good as Origins, I will say that. Uh, we'll move on now then to Valhalla. And oh my god, where do I start on this one? How oh, was this packed? It was incredibly dense as a story and extensively used the lore of Assassin's Creed. It was the biggest and most lore heavy game for the Assassin's Creed franchise we've had in a while. And it was driven by the history as well. A massive amount of backstory given between the characters. The story of Eivor was fun and I loved the way that they used the framing device of the Animus. That both people existed within this DNA structure of this memory at the same time and fighting against herself and Odin, it was great. And there was a lot of twists and turns. 
and they were good twists as well. They weren't predictable like in Odyssey. They were genuinely, I did not see them coming, and, and some of them were fantastic. And the ability, as I say, to take you to places like Asgard and Jotunheim in these trance states and allowed you to play as Odin just made the game feel bigger than it was, I think. And speaking of bigger, it also linked to the bigger narrative of the entire franchise. And I think it has really propelled that narrative forward as well. And I think that's something that the games have been somewhat lacking. Maybe for accessibility of new players, I'm not sure. But it was good. And I don't think I'm hiding the fact here that the totals are first place to Valhalla. Second place to Origins. And lastly to Odyssey. It genuinely wasn't that great. So then, that leaves us with the totals. Which are... Another drum roll, please! Valhalla comes in first with 11 points, then Odyssey with 7, and then Origins with 6. Now, I think that's fair. I think that's the ratings they should get. Origins and Odyssey are extremely close. I think Odyssey just ekes out, but Valhalla is by far and away, I think anyway, the best Assassin's Creed game of those three for many different <laughs> reasons, if I'm honest. The only one it fails on is the main character. I feel Eivor isn't quite as interesting as Cassandra. But there you go, that is my breakdown of the three most modern and recent Assassin's Creed games. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really do appreciate it. Um, this one took a bit more work than most of them do, so I appreciate you watching if you have done. Uh, if you want to watch more of my videos, they will appear on screen now. And I very much appreciate it if you could also give me a like if you enjoyed this video or even a subscribe if you really enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this. But I appreciate you sticking around and thank you so much. So that's it from me today though guys. Thank you again and I will see you next time. You stay safe.